Oh. Oh. All right. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. It's awesome to see this many of you here. Um, my name is Anthony. I am the person who created the online student peer mentoring program. Uh, you guys have by default been added to that program as mentees uh, because you're taking your first Lehman class online. It's specific to Lehman. So if you've taken one elsewhere, doesn't matter. Uh, it's different year. We're changing the game at Lehman. Um, <clears throat> so the mentoring program, I just a little bit about it before I dive in, uh, was established last year. I developed it and piloted it in spring 22. Um, and it was basically designed to scaffold more support for you guys in online learning at Lehman. Uh, specifically because in light of the pandemic, we've seen a lot more demand for online student support, which makes sense. We all transferred to remote. Um, and we just wanted to find a way to kind of improve the ways in which you guys are navigating campus resources, understanding how to use technologies, um, and just overall succeeding in the online space, despite possibly being completely remote. Um, it's obviously a lot different participating in campus remotely than in person. So we're kind of here to bridge that gap a little bit. Um, and make sure we're, you know, a united campus community. So without further ado, let me introduce myself and my colleagues. So again, I'm Anthony Wheeler. I am the online student peer mentor and program coordinator for this program. And I'm also a learning experience designer with the Office of Online Ed. Um, I'm accompanied by Osma Nebler, who's another mentor and an educational technologist, and Alexis Tenenbaum, who's our online student support and resource specialist. Um, I'm going to ask them if they want to come off mic, introduce themselves, give a fun fact, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Anthony said, my name is Asma, and I am a current grad student at the um, CUNY, the Graduate Center, the CUNY Graduate Center in Manhattan. Um, a fun fact about me is that I like to make keyboards and play around with like switches and get really cool keycaps. So um, that's not necessarily related to our session today, but if you enjoy it, please feel free to stop by and um, feel free to talk to me about it. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexis Tenenbaum. You can just call me Lex. Very informal. Super nice to meet you all via Zoom without seeing you. Um, I'm, I'm the online student support and resource specialist, Baby, basically it's just a fancy way of saying um, I'm here, we are here um, to have you have a very successful semester. Um, and a fun fact about me, I lived in Israel for a while and I did a mock training camp and I got best combat soldier. But I don't really know how I got it because I was like private Gen um, private Benjamin. For you who are too young to know that reference, please look it up. <laughs> I actually know the reference, so yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you want to see me. So yes, hopefully you can. You can see me. No. No, no. Oh, God, what am I doing wrong? Now we can. Oh, you can. I okay. See you, Bo. <laughs> nice <laughs> to meet you, Bo. <laughs> but I got that reference. I got awesome, that. I great see. energy. <laughs> and then it was worth it. <laughs> I know, right? Just as long as one person charge, got folks. it, it's okay. No, I'll join in, uh, Richard. Dante, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, good. Yes, Private Benjamin. Good movie. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but before yeah. it was a movie, it was a TV show, so you're still too young. Was it a TV show? Yes. But we have to go back to this presentation. <laughs> we can okay, talk about yeah, you're, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> um, and so a little bit more about myself. I'm also a CUNY student. I'm working on my PhD at the Graduate Center in Urban Education. Uh, with a specialization in digital humanities. Um, fun fact about me, I'm a big fan and advocate of video games and I use them in my teaching a lot. Um, so if you wanna learn a little bit about games for learning, let me know. Um, <laughs> but, 
So with that being said, I'm going to move on. So we decided to establish the online student peer mentoring program because there's a lot of research that shows that there's a lot of benefits to having a peer mentor on your campus or off your campus. Um, <laughs> And that includes many things, just like overall student retention, student success. Having that mentor relationship kind of gives you somebody to bounce ideas off of. They give you insight into campus resources, where to go if you need something, um, navigating the complicated academic terrain, um, as well as just, you know, gaining new perspectives. We keep notes on you guys, so we'll be able to reflect on how far you've come, your accomplishments. Um, and it's kind of a working relationship. On the left, you'll see an image of the cover of an online student mentoring handbook. I created that last year and I updated it. You guys will be receiving a copy next week once I finalize it. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of it. You should take a look. Um, but yeah. So the mentor-mentee relationship is going to work like this. <laughs> All you guys really have to do is request appointments with us through the Lehman Navigate system, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, appointments are available based on what you need. There'll be different appointment types. I'll go over them soon. Um, and you can choose one based on what you feel is best for your learning style. Um, and as for mentors, they'll be sending out like bi-weekly communications. I send out briefs to just kind of talk about what's happening on campus, uh, things to know, um, and just other details like uh, <clears throat> professional development events, uh, student community events, like group activities and societies. Um, and it's our job, essentially, to make sure you know where to locate things, how to uh, find study resources, like using library resources, for example, um, and just protocols for overcoming a lot of those obstacles that being online poses, if that makes sense. And like I said, we're going to be using Lehman Navigate to do this. And you guys will get this presentation. Um, it's all these links you'll be able to use, so don't worry. Um, so Lehman Navigate is basically a student's uh, management system that kind of tracks where you are with your degree, how you're doing. Um, Lehman Navigate, you have a success team and that will include one other person, I'm not sure from where, and us <laughs> is who I'm concerned with. Who I'm concerned with. Um, Lehman Navigate is super user-friendly. It's available on desktop and mobile. Um, so if you wanna go on your phone and schedule an appointment impromptu after you, submit an assignment and you feel like you could have done better and you want to figure out how you could have improved that, hop on. All of us have a scheduled availability. Um, so anytime that we're open, you can schedule whenever. So, and I think, Alexis, I don't know how many days a week you'll be on campus. Ozma and I will be on campus like one or two days a week. So these yeah, I'll be, be on cool. four, four days a week. Cool. So while these are primarily on Zoom, you can also meet us in person if you want to hang. Um, we're in Carmen 249, and we love visitors, so let us know. We um, do. We options. love visitors. When you create an appointment, you can select Zoom or in person, so that way we know where to meet you. Um, and when you create an appointment, you'll receive a link, and you'll get a reminder via text and email. Um, so if you get text messages from Navigate, don't be alarmed. Uh, it's just accessing your student record to contact you. Um, and yeah, Nav Navigate's how you'll be receiving messages from us, those updates, those briefs, things like that. And you can communicate with us too, that way. Here's just kind of a screenshot of what Navigate looks like on mobile. Um, so in order to use it, you sign into Lima Navigate using your CUNY first login, which is what you use for most Lehman technologies is the CUNY First ID. Um, there's two, there's your email, and then there's CUNY First, they're different. Uh, so don't try to enter your Lehman uh, email address <laughs> to access it, because it won't work. Uh, make sure you use your CUNY wired ID. Um, and then you just go to schedule an appointment, you click appointments, and then it shows your mentor's availability. All of you will be assigned to one of us, one of the three of us. Um, so you'll see either my, Osmo, or Alexis's name. And you just click and you can schedule it pretty rapidly. And like I said, you can choose the appointment type and then the days and times in which you'd like to meet. Many kinds of appointment types. Um, so the appointment types we're planning on offering this semester, there's three. 
we have the individual one-on-one -on -one consultations, super straightforward. You guys meet with us directly. If you just want to bang out an issue, it's the quickest way to do it. If you're maybe not as comfortable doing that and prefer like a group, more collaborative setting, we're going to be offering group sessions or we'll allow, I think up to five people we said or so, um, and maybe more depending on how that plays out. Uh, just to work together in a space, we can talk about a similar topic. Um, and just kind of share ideas and experiences, learn from each other, uh, practice, of, you know, a community of praxis, if you will. And then we also are going to be offering presentations similar to this. Uh, during the presentation sessions, one mentor or sometimes more uh, will be giving a presentation on a specific topic. Um, we'll go over what those topics could be in just a moment. Uh, and then after students will have time to like ask questions or anything. But if you're somebody who prefers not to say a word and <laughs> just kind of sit take notes and absorb, that might be the form for you. Um, so yeah, there's many ways to go about that. <laughs> and I think, and I'm gonna ask you guys, just to get a better idea of how often we should offer these things, we're gonna have a poll, which you should see now. Out of all of these, what do you think you would prefer? What's best for your learning style? Uh, oh, individual, popping, okay. <laughs> Collaborative, you got a couple. You guys don't like hanging out together? <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, all that. right. I'm interested in the fact that nobody's really picking presentation, which is, Interesting. I think, honestly, kind of good. <laughs> I like the collaborative space. <laughs> Give it another moment. All right. So yeah, you guys picked. Can you see the results? Yeah. Cool. Uh, 19 of you picked individual. Good to know. It's easiest to do. Um, you don't really have to plan for that. You just to it at your earliest convenience. Um, groups, I believe a lot of our sessions will offer, we'll keep it open to multiple people. Um, so uh, if you prefer one-on-one, -on -one, just select that option. Otherwise it will be the option for other people to join the session. Um, yeah, we'll iron out those logistics as we go, figuring out how it works. This is our first time using the Navigate system. Um, so we are learning alongside you. And move on. So these are the three areas we're thinking uh, for presentations. Well, this for types of mentoring sessions. Uh, these are like the areas. So when you go to create an appointment, you select what type of support you need. So there's orientation online learning. This is more of a general, like fundamentals to online at Lehman specifically, uh, introducing you to the resources you'll need to complete online coursework. Um, such as using Blackboard or LMS and other learning about course modalities and accessing library resources. Tips for succeeding online is more about strategies for succeeding online, um, just like approaches like time management, uh, making sure you have a proper study space, technology set up, and other things. Alexis will get into that in just a moment. Um, and then assistance with educational tools and technologies. In those sessions, we'll be going over specific tools like Blackboard or VoiceThread, which is a very popular tool, Lehman, um, and other presentation tools. Uh, it could be multiple things. We'll see what people need help with and then create more offerings based on that. Cool. So I'm going to quickly do the crash course and orientation to online learning. And then once I'm done with that, we'll pass the ball to my other presenters. So something you need to keep in mind as of spring 23, so the next time you're going to register for your courses, which will be in November, um, CUNY is offering a lot more modalities than they did in the past. So there's a lot more course codes and the CUNY first that you'll need to keep in mind when building your schedule. Um, so obviously P is for in-person. In the in-person sessions, you're completely face-to-face. -face. You're gonna be on campus in a classroom never really online unless you're using something like Blackboard for readings or activities, but otherwise you'll always be in a room at a specific time. Now there's three <laughs> online modalities. 
Uh, online asynchronous is online, but you never meet at the same time. So basically completing the work when you can to your own schedule by like a certain date set by your professor. Um, some people might be familiar. Online synchronous is the opposite, where you basically are online, but in a Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, so you are online, but still replicating the classroom space. And then online mix is interesting because I believe the faculty has the discretion of like how to balance it out percentage wise, but you could do, and somebody jump in if I'm wrong, because this one is the one that confuses me the most. Um, online mix, I believe, is like a certain percentage is synchronous and the rest asynchronous. Yeah. I believe, right? Exactly. Um, so, like, you could do like 25% synchronous, like at the same time, and the rest of your work is just when you can or when it's due. Um, and then hybrid. Sorry, like, can you repeat that? They cut up. Oh, yeah. Um, so, online mix is when a percentage of it is offered synchronously. So let's say 25% of it will be at the same, all of you together on Zoom. And then the 75% of the course will just be you doing coursework on your own. And that percentage could change depending on the professor. That's just an example. Um, so depending on the faculty, it might be easier for you to pursue that option. Uh, so keep an eye out. And always, if you're not sure like how much, the, if you wanna know more, email the faculty that's listed in the course they will tell you all these modalities have to be listed beforehand. Uh, so they have to know what they're doing. So don't be shy about asking. You're well within your right um, to please do that. So then there's hybrids. Now we have hybrid asynchronous, which I believe is partially in person. So when you're in, when you're synchronous, it's all in, in person on campus together. But then the rest, the online portion is asynchronous. So uh, you could have like, so let's say if you had a class that was scheduled for two days a week, you could have one day of class that's in person and the rest you just do on your own. While as hybrid synchronous is in person and online, but every time you meet, it's all together. If it's online, it's on Zoom or Blackboard together at the same time like this. High field is a unique one that's unique to experiential learning. Um, so if there are courses that are specific to something like field work or doing labs, things that require in-person interactions, um, that is a unique option that you'll see for certain courses. I haven't seen a lot of them that qualify for that, but I believe in more STEM-oriented courses or even like courses that take advantage of using music, like city museums, uh, that would be considered high field because you'd be in the field doing on-site learning, um, but then the rest would be online. And then high flux is the umbrella for everything. High flux is something that was implemented early pandemic, uh, where CUNY decided that there would be an option for students to participate in a class using any modality. Um, the rules around that can shift from professor to professor, so keep that in mind. But generally, high flex means that you'll be able to attend in person, online, or asynchronously. That's like the definition. Um, but again, it can change from faculty to faculty. Uh, Lehman classrooms are very well, or at least a good amount of them, are well equipped with high flex technology. So when you're in the classroom, you'll have a camera that can like move around and see who's speaking. Um, microphones are like rigged around the room. So if somebody's participating online, they can still hear the classroom discussion very clearly, and you guys can see them on a screen. Uh, so it's a good way to get the best of both worlds, or if you have a schedule that's not super reliable and sometimes you may need to be home, it's a good way to participate in that way. Um, and you have choice. It's all about your student agency. So it's up to you how you want to participate. Just looking at the chat. All right, so Lehman is unique. Lehman is a leader in online education, if you didn't know. Um, currently in the fall semester, we have over 1,200 online courses, which is massive. <laughs> um, Lehman also has about 11 programs that are completely online listed here. Uh, so you have a lot of options. And in addition, there's something that we should know that there's CUNY Global Search. 
CUNY Global Search enables you to look at courses across your own campus in different modalities, different offering types, as well as other campuses, but we're gonna look at Lehman specifically. This is what Global Search looks like. So when you're on the home page and you go to search for a class, all you have to do is select what kind of modality you're interested in. Um, and you can click special uh, requirements. So for example, if you don't wanna spend money on a textbook, you can click zero costs and it'll only show you courses that won't require you to buy anything. Um, or if you want something that requires your exams are completely online rather than in-person, because there are courses that do online learning with in-person exams, you can specify that you want to remain online. On just to know it, it won't show you anything unless you pick two uh, filters because it needs to narrow it down. So if you just click hybrid and hit search, it's not going to show you anything. You probably need to fill out a subject or some other course attribute. So Blackboard. So Blackboard is our learning management system at CUNY for another year. <laughs> um, Blackboard, I'm sure some people may have used. I'm going to ask you all to answer a poll once again, because I'm having fun with it. <laughs> And basically, I just want to know if you've used Blackboard, if not, hit no, or if you've used another platform, like some schools use Canvas, Brightspace slash D2L, um, all kinds of things. And if you click another platform, feel free to drop in the chat because I'm just kind of curious to see where people are coming from. I'll give you guys a moment. We're getting a pretty even split here. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys said 48% of you have used Blackboard. That's good. Um, so you're familiar with how to navigate it at least a little bit. Almost half of you said no, which is fair. We're going to quickly do a little rundown. And then uh, two of you said another platform. Uh, Moodle. I haven't used Moodle in, I want to say 10 years. <laughs> um, I didn't even realize a lot of people are still using it. <clears throat> cool. Good to know. A lot of these function very similarly and offer similar functionality. So it should be very easy for you to adapt to Blackboard. Well, I, really quickly. Yeah. I'm from I'm familiar with Blackboard, but I'm not gonna say that I'm proficient <laughs> with okay. using it. I know what it looks like and I know what to click on in certain cases, but I'm not proficient <laughs> when it comes to certain things. <laughs> so I just want to get that out. <laughs> That's fine. That's why we have our educational technology sessions. So that way you can learn details on how to navigate Blackboard, ways to use different fun different tools in Blackboard. A lot of Lehman's like tech tools are built into the LMS. So like the professors assign you a voice thread, which if you're not familiar, which I'm sure a lot of you aren't, I didn't know what it was till I came to Lehman. Um, it's basically a presentation tool that allows you to do a narration. So you do like a PowerPoint and similar to Zoom, you have your like little picture, your video stream, and you just talk about your presentations. But Osmo, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Just to give you an idea of what our Blackboard instance looks like, here's an example from Professor Maney in the English department. He's great. Um, Professor Maney does mostly text-based modules, but you'll notice on the left that he does his modules in two-week increments. Faculty can choose if they want to do each week. Some people do two weeks. Some people do entire units, which could be more. Um, so it may look different for different people. But Professor Maney particularly will list exactly what to do, and then you just go in and create those posts yourself. While there are other faculty like Sherry Deckman, uh, she's fantastic. We'll kind of break it down and see these more sub sections where then you just click into it and it brings you to the space to make, to submit the assignment, whether that's typing it, uploading something, there are different ways. Um, 
but most people will have like a schedule for you to lay and lay out what you're supposed to do by when. Um, so yeah, and I will say, when you go into your class, look at your syllabus. <laughs> will real quick. Yeah. Um. So so the syllabus would be on a blackboard. Is that what you're saying? Yes, there will be a little tab here. Let me move back one. Up here, under start here on the left, right above where the purple box is, there's syllabus. Faculty will upload their syllabuses there. And a lot of the time, they'll also add a course schedule, like a chart with dates and assignments, uh, just for ease of knowing when things are due. Cool. Thank you for that. Of course. So, so everything is user friendly. Say that again. No, I was saying everything is user friendly. Like, for the most easy part, easy to. Yeah. Okay. It's easy. And if to not, um, there are many people like us. There's also a Blackboard administrator who can help you navigating these tools. Um, so if you ever get stumped, you just hop on navigate, schedule a meeting with your mentor, and we'll get you there pretty quickly. Um, but like I said, as I was saying, look at the syllabus because a lot of faculty will put up these course shells and copy them. So the dates and things or certain assignments may not line up correctly. So I would just double check your professor's work when you get into the Blackboard and have the syllabus because you don't want there to be like misaligned due dates, them thinking it's one day, you thinking it's another, the big miscommunication that could affect multiple students. So if you have a chance to look it over before classes, I would do that. Um, as a tip, if faculty or people, they make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, so take a moment to check their work. Uh, Anthony, this is the Richard. Uh, I have a quick okay. question. Yeah. Starting to eject. Um, so, so quickly. So Blackboard, to my understanding, yeah. um, when a professor says that they're emailing you or they're sending information, it's not on your Outlook. This is directly happening here on Blackboard. Is that correct? It's both. Um, so when you this, both okay, and this will come up later. Um, your Blackboard. Really good question. That is a really good question. It's linked to an email. So when your professor posts announcements in Blackboard, it'll be there, you'll get a notification in Blackboard, but also you'll get an email with the announcement, any attachments, any links, uh, so you are notified immediately without having to be logged in. Um, does that answer? Yeah, it does. Just one follow-up question. I know someone else has their hands. I don't want to take too much of the time, but, but um, so, okay, got that. So as you mentioned, most of the assignments and most of the functions are all, happening on blackboard and they will give you the direct ability to click and do all of the things that they need to like for instance i just got a voice thread thingy majiggy uh that i'm about to to do um i did a quick tutorial and, and i just realized that it's all happening on this blackboard platform i don't have to do anything else and move anywhere else it all happens there is that correct perfect most Thank classes you. that you are on blackboard that are run on blackboard yes you may occasionally have to like write some like if you write an essay you're going to do that and whatever text editor you prefer, like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. But a lot of the things will be submitted through Blackboard. Um, if not, your professor will specify where to submit it. Like if they prefer email, they'll tell you. Um, but a lot of the time it will be directly through Blackboard. Other questions? So I, I do have one question to what you just said. So when it comes down to it, if a professor has a has an assignment that isn't necessarily um, you know something that could you know could be submitted through blackboard would they have a different timeline where it could be submitted like is it extended or is it is it around the same I think that I'm would just vary. To, yeah I, I was going to say it could vary okay. Okay. Yeah, it would very much depend on the faculty and their preference. Um, so that's something to discuss in your first day of class with them. If you have any confusion around submission, just to clarify with them. Um, okay. So yeah. Okay. Quick question, Will. Thank you. <laughs> One more question, I promise you. Um, now, as soon as you're enrolled in the class, is the syllabus then available for you on Blackboard or? 
So uh, Blackboard course shells are generally made available on the first day classes. If the faculty is using Blackboard to that extent, it should be all set up that day. Um, so it should already be uploaded for you. If it's not there, I would expect that they distribute it to you directly in class. Um, but also, you're also well within your right as a student to ask for it before the semester starts. Um, because some people like to prepare. Some people need to know like what content they need to purchase. Um, so if it's not posted already, you can just ask them. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. So my last slide before I pass it off, I think. Um, the Lehman, Lehman College has developed this Are You Ready course. All of you have been automatically enrolled in it. It's on Blackboard. Um, it's basically a little self-paced course for you guys as students to learn how to navigate the Lehman Technologies, understanding Blackboard um, and other tools, welcoming you to CUNY Online Learning, learning about Netiquette, uh, which is online etiquette, very cute. Um, it takes like an hour about if you just do it straight through. Uh, I don't, it, you get a little certificate completion. You don't have to do it, but it definitely is helpful if you have any confusion around certain tools um, to take a look. Uh, yeah. Did I miss anything? I think I'm good. I think you're good. So I think I'm going to pass it to Alexis. All right. Let me put myself on view. All right. All right, everyone. So let's get started. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Just going to share my screen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Find my screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me just do it. Sorry, you guys, one second. And I'm on online education, by the way. All right. Mm -mm. Ay, ay, ay. One second. Yeah, I'm getting it, but my thing's not up. But it will be. If you need me to share Alexis, I can. I got it. All right. Here we go. Does everyone see it? Yes, thank you. All right. Yes. We're all human. We're all human. Okay. So, do, 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 do. Let me just get a single. Okay. So, here we go. All right. And did I mention I'm from online education? Okay. So, create a study place, um, a study space. Um, so, before I begin, I want to ask you guys have you ever taken an online class? And are there any tips or strategies that you would like to share? Um, and you can share it in uh, the chat room. I also launched a poll. So if you guys want to just drop a short yeah. answer there. And if you want to just do any tips or helpful advice in the chat, that would be great as well. I see one. All right, so pretty good. All right, almost I, everyone here has taken an online class. Um, so I guess that's inevitable being that we went through over two years of COVID. Um, so what I'm gonna go, I'm gonna end the poll is I'm just gonna talk about in terms of creating that study space and the fact that you guys have all had 
um, online classes. It could have just been one class or an entire semester. Um, but what I want to talk about is with the study space, it's good. And this is just also my experience is to have one designated study area. This is just good for you to know that this is the area where you need to really focus. Um, you have your internet um, all set up. It's presentable. You're isolated from noise, um, any interruptions. Also, if you live with people, it's good for them to see, to know that you have a specific space. So when you are in this space, you are studying. Um, if those who are lucky to have an office space in New York City, congratulations. Of course, that would be wonderful. Um, refreshments, formal way of saying just hydrate. Um, I know it might sound a little silly, but um, when you're in class, it's just good to just you know, maybe a lot of you are coming from work or, you know, you just woke up and it's just good to have stuff nearby to keep your energy up. And because you just don't really want to take your, shut your um, video off, go get the stuff, come back. So you want to make this area your refuge, your space, you know, you have class and this is where you are. You are the king or queen of your space. Any questions? All right. Nope. Okay. Okay. So what, what is your why? What are your life goals? I know that that sounds pretty grandiose. You might be like, I, I don't know my life goals right now. All I know is I want to take an online class. When when you're taking this class online or classes online, you know, like any time with anything, with jobs, with raising kids, with, with anything, sometimes you're going to go through a slump and you want to just remember what are your goals? What are your benchmarks throughout the class um, to get that degree? And that's just going to keep you keep you going. Um, I know for myself, you know, I, I also teach online classes and I do see there's a, with the students in the beginning, there's excitement. Yeah, we're going to do this. And then there's a little kind of like you're getting burnt out a bit, which has happened. We're all human, but you just want to remember, you know, what are my goals? What am I going for? And I think this is just really, really important to know that you know, having people to support you. Um, Lehman has support services. If you go to Division of Student Affairs, um, you, you want to just have that support with you and have the reminders and have also the people to go to to help you. Um, you want to think about what do you want from this journey? Why are you in college? What do you want? If I'm curious to know right now in the chat, can, and even though we don't have a poll for this, I'm curious to know, what are your goals? What are your goals? Why are you taking online classes? If you could just write some of them in the chat, that would be awesome. Just so we can like look at them, just get an idea. And if you don't have any goals, maybe think about that. <laughs> okay. So the next one, prepare for this semester. You want to make sure that everything is set before class. Absolutely everything is, is ready. You have the strong internet connection. Um, you have the folders, the semester folders, the class folders. Make a calendar. Use Lehman's College academic calendar. Um, do checklists, alerts, reminders, prioritize. Um, it's... You know, being online, you want to make sure that everything is prepared before the class and throughout the class. Um, you already have your syllabus for the semester. You should have. Um, and you can start marking down those important dates when you have the assignments, when you have, you know, especially the classes, the, the, the classes, you know, when you don't have classes, 
Um, also, it's very, very important for that material, even though the semester started, start reviewing all the materials. Um, get to be familiar with materials and set your deadlines. Um, I recommend not having the deadlines when the assignment is due. Have the deadline beforehand um, so you can fix anything at the last second and schedule breaks. Don't get burnt out. Talking from personal experience. All right. So with Lehman email. You want to check your, I cannot say this enough. We can't say this enough. Please check your Lehman email daily. It is important. It is so important. All the CUNY Lehman correspondence, it's only sent to your Lehman College email. So for those of you who transferred from a community college um, or you know a four-year college, please change your email. It needs to be updated. If it's not updated to a Lehman, you will not receive anything. Make sure, please make sure that your email is correct. We see a lot of times, everybody does, does this, we're human, but sometimes you leave out an M or you add a period or you forget this, forget that. Make sure your email is correct. If you're not getting emails, check your email make sure the correct email is there. And you're gonna update your Blackboard email to the Lehman email address. Everything is connected to your email address. Please check it daily. And again, if you are not getting emails, something's wrong. Okay, and we're here to help. Find other students. So we're gonna take a poll on this one. Are there any clubs, activities, or student groups you are interested in? And please put them in the chat. Okay. Okay, people are still answering. I like this. Okay, not sure. Still have answers. Okay, this is excellent. Okay, so I'm glad we have 77% of the people of you guys are saying yes, like it. Okay. So because you are online, it is, it's really important to, be, to feel connected to the Lehman community. You are part of the Lehman community. And we just wanna make sure that you know about the resources available and to give you some ideas of how you connect, okay? So in terms of finding other students, who are they, right? It is a great thing to have study groups, to just pick even, even one person. We're not talking about large groups, but just groups so you can get to know the people. Everyone in your class is, is, of course, studying the same thing. And you get so much from interacting with other people, not only you know, getting to know the person, but getting to know other aspects of your class maybe you weren't aware of. Um, you you want to connect with peers from the Lehman platforms, email, social media. I know that um, there was a comment earlier in this orientation where someone was not fond of social media. I hear you. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. But for certain situations, it can really make a big difference. Um, in social media, there's a club, actually, it's called Club Central, okay? I highly recommend it, highly recommend it. Um, again, the whole, we want you to make sure that you know that you are part of the Lehman community. All right, so I am going to pass it on.
Hi, Alexis. Um, Hi, Oz. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much um, for those tips. It was all super, super helpful. And thank you all for staying with us <laughs> as we get through <laughs> everything. Um, it's all very exciting. Let me know if you cannot see my screen. Again, my name is Asma. I am the education technologist in the office. And I just want to um, insert a quick note that it's really nice to see your responses in the chat. Do not be shy at all. Um, in regards to some of the tips that Alexis provided, um, most of them are very relevant for me, especially when asking of like my um, family members, my friends and other people in my home, um, when I was taking online courses to just give me a little bit of time and space and they all accommodated me. And that made a difference in my learning experience. I did start grad school um, in the pandemic. So uh, it was really essential just to like have my own study area. So I really resonated with a lot of those tips. Um, the next set of information will be on assistance with educational tools and technologies, which unpacks the digital resources available to you at Lehman College. And we did get an earlier question about Blackboard. So you'll notice that most of the content that I'm going to cover and for the sake of brevity, I probably will move through a little faster, um, but feel free to drop in questions. But you'll notice that most of the tools um, that I will present on or discuss are available through Blackboard unless otherwise noted. So let's get to the most important thing, <laughs> which is that you wanna make sure that in addition to logging into Blackboard, that you update your email. And this is a key step because we strongly recommend that you use your Lehman College email credentials, if not your CUNY First credentials. Um, it's good to keep track of inboxes. And if you can separate work life, um, from school life and then your personal life and then that one inbox that you use for free subscriptions, please do it. Um, otherwise, if you have a little more agility to move through and search for things and create good folders, um, we would recommend also for you to enter in the one that you check the most and that's quite important as well. Um, this, this slide, which will be distributed after the presentation, gives some pretty clear information about how you can update your email. That is perfect. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> yes. Uh, so our first tool that we're going to be looking at is Turnitin. And we do have a poll available for this slide. And it's a general one again. And this just, I would like to know, I'm curious, um, for those of us who are familiar with Turnitin, um, my anecdote is that I saw it pre and during college. So in high school, it was used alongside the term plagiarism. In college, at Lehman and through our office, however, it is used alongside the term academic integrity. Um, and that's really important. Um, we are of the mind that we're not looking at errors or you know, when we notice that people have poor citation, it's usually an indicator that you may, you may need some sort of assistance. So academic integrity, however, speaks to soundness and transparency. And I'll get into the little bits about that um, in this tool and another tool that we have coming up. But the gist is that Turnitin is a software that scans your essays to ensure that some of your, um, to ensure and also to make clear to your professors that you have properly cited the information, that you haven't borrowed um, information from places like Wikipedia or elsewhere without providing some sort of in-text citation, noting it in your bibliography and so forth, or either in your footnotes. Um, and as a key note, you're allowed to request an alternative form for submission if you're not comfortable with Turnitin to protect your intellectual property. Um, I'm gonna say a little bit more, and then I wanna, um, if Anthony, if you're comfortable, if you would like to speak to any specific details with Turnitin, I know that um, you have a little bit of um, background in that, but essentially Turnitin um, takes your submission and ingests it into its database, um, which basically means that your material might exist in that space for it to continue using it elsewhere. So for instance, your paper now um, can be used in another setting, perhaps if not on campus and elsewhere, wherever Turnitin believes it's um, most useful. It's according to their discretion, really. Um, and you're, some people are not comfortable with their property existing in that sort of setting. Um, Anthony, did you want to add a little bit more to that? No, that was perfect. Okay, awesome. <laughs> awesome. And 
And so a little bit more about Turnitin outside of looking at um, integrity and also soundness is the fact that it's really good and useful for feedback. So to locate it from your instructor whenever available, you're going to navigate to your My Grade field. And then from there, it's all within Blackboard, of course. And then from there, you'll notice a speech bubble, which we've highlighted on the slide um, and in the, um, in the image, excuse me. And that's where your instructor feedback panel exists. And when you click it, it will re reveal your feedback. Um, some instructors prefer to grade with a rubric. So if one is provided, you'll also be able to engage the rubric. It will say view rubric as well. Save Design is our other tool and it is um, similar to Turnitin. It's built into Blackboard, of course, and it conducts an originality report uh, based on your writing. And so the originality report helps us to, or helps your instructor to identify areas where you may need citations. And one thing that's really important about Turnitin and Safe Assign is that these tools are not 100%, um, which actually speaks to why, all the more reason why you want to be very transparent about what informs your thought. Sometimes we are looking at the same sources and we believe that what we materialize in our documents um, and elsewhere where we have to submit information entirely belongs to us and it's our own thought and it's been polished and smooth and everything. But really, sometimes we are looking at the same sources and we need to attribute those sources. So this is just a key note that if it is not a matter of uh, quoting something or citing something, you may want to reference where you first encountered some sort of information and how you articulate that in your writing is going to show up. Um, and in particular with Safe Assign, what's good is that you get a percentage. So the lower the, the percentage, the better. So seldom will you see a 0% report, um, but I believe the nice number is 19%. You really wanna make sure that you're in that area. Once you start getting closer to 30, 40, 50 and so forth, that's where your instructor might be concerned that you may need some sort of support with your citations and listing your sources. So the next tool that we are looking at is Respondus, which is, um, we have the lockdown browser version, but there is another version called um, Respondus lockdown browser and monitor. Um, the monitor is the one that uses your webcam. This version um, is really good because it doesn't allow, it doesn't allow that type of, or that high level of a surveillance. Um, your experience is pretty much um, unique to your browser. And I'm gonna read the first two points before I get into my notes. Um, it's enabled through um, your browser and it essentially locks it so you won't be able to navigate to other places and it's generally used during exams. So if you are completing an essay or something that um, can be done at a, in, in an incremental period of time, you won't be required more likely than not um, or it's unlikely for you to use Respondus for that purpose. Um, and then the next point is that you can, if you have Chromebook, um, you can download it. I believe there's an extension for Respondus as well. Um, instructors must, must mention this piece of information in their course description in CUNY first, since some students may not be comfortable using this software. So just something to keep in mind that as you're looking through your courses and such, you really want to understand and think about um, what kind of privacy do you want to have in an online environment? Um, it's just as important as making sure that you have the right resources to attend your class and be successful. So Zoom, the thing that we're all using and the thing that we use, whether it's for school, work, or connecting with family um, over the last two years and ongoing because the pandemic, is, I don't think it's going to go away for a very long time, unfortunately. But Zoom is a key platform and um, we'll get into the specifics about what kind of access that you have as a student of Lehman. But just for those of you who may not be familiar with all the features of Zoom, um, it allows for up to 300 people to participate and 49 um, video feeds to be shown simultaneously. So those tiles, um, we have a nice little GIF in this um, presentation that will speak to that if um, you're unfamiliar with the term. Um, there is whiteboard capability, screen sharing, which is what I'm doing. Um, and there's other features that your instructors may want to implement such as breakout rooms, poll, 
tools and also just managing the comment section. So there's a lot of features and things going on on Zoom. Take some time to explore it, especially transcription, live transcriptions. I watch television with transcripts and I do everything with um, subtitles, excuse me. And so it's very hard for me to like go back to things that don't allow for that feature. So if you're someone um, who benefits from that, these are all features available through Zoom. And so the level of access that you have at no additional cost um, is provided through CUNY. So you won't have, if you already have a Zoom account, we recommend that you go to the address, which is provided on this slide at the very bottom and you're going to put in your CUNY first credentials. And then from there, you will have access to the license that um, CUNY has purchased for students, staff, and faculty. And it's basically a pro account. So if you have a free account, um, you might be limited with the amount of services and the amount of time that you'll be able to be on this specific um, platform. However, with the level of access that you have through CUNY, um, you should be at the pro level and if there are any issues, you may want to reach out to us um, and we can pinpoint the right, hopefully help you to find the right people that can um, configure your account or help you resolve any issues with that. Um, another, this is the really cool GIF that we all love here that shows the video tile. Um, and again, this is just some more additional um, information about what kind of features and tools that you have. Um, in your sessions that you all might be familiar with, but is available for review. So another video conferencing platform that is specifically provided through our LMS or our learning management system Blackboard is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Um, and this is similar to Zoom, perhaps has a fewer features or features that show up in different ways. And we'll get um, a nice little, in the next slide, we'll look at um, an example of a session but essentially this is um, a video conferencing platform that you would access through Blackboard. So you wouldn't have to download something um, in addition like you would with Zoom. And this is where your professor may want to centralize and also help you have more familiarity with um, Blackboard. So being able to use this platform may seem like a learning curve, but it's definitely a good thing to have in your arsenal, especially for those of you um, interested in education you will probably have to know a little bit about learning management systems and Blackboard is pretty popular. So definitely recommend exploring it um, through the link that we have provided on this slide. And here is an example of a session. So highlighted at the bottom left um, includes features about raising your hands, um, messages, and then to the right also has other information about uploading files, um, seeing who is in your session, the dialogue box and so forth. And then at the very center is where you would be able to access um, or basically see your classroom setting, so to speak. See your instructor's view or whomever is speaking their view. And you have your features with um, muting, your camera, so forth, things that might be familiar to you um, already on Zoom. Okay. Another important um, package or benefit that you get as a member of Lehman College and also of CUNY is the fact that at no additional cost, you have access to Microsoft Office 365 for education. And so, um, some of the tools or primarily the tools that are available for you is Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, Teams, OneDrive, and OneNote. Uh, I wanna isolate Teams and OneNote for a second. I do have a Mac. Um, but I also have a PC and I love them both. I like the operating systems, the benefits that you get from them and they're pretty interchangeable, at least with Microsoft. But the key thing to know about Teams is that it includes um, chat abilities. You can look at your calendar, you can do conference calls. So another video platform or video conferencing platform, excuse me, that's available for you in case you don't want to create a session in order to interact with your classmates or perhaps to reach out to your professor if they're okay or if they use that platform. Um, you can also do file management as well on Teams and you have access to the CUNY directory. So for instance, if you were to log in through um, uh, Microsoft Office 365 with your Lehman credentials and then click the Teams icon and then you open up, let's say just a regular chat session and you type in my name, 
I'm one of few asthmas that you might meet, <laughs> um, but usually you should see my name pop up and you would be able to send a message. Um, likewise with other members of the office if they're on that platform at a given time. But just to give you an example, it's a really neat feature. And if you're familiar with Slack, um, which is a, another sort of messaging system that shows up in workplaces um, or the work side of like educational environments, it sort of functions in that way. OneNote is also really awesome because you have your own isolated space, but your professor could create a space where it's collaborative for notes. And that might be useful for review at the end of a semester, or perhaps you're crowdsourcing information, or just in general, maybe you need to brainstorm or make a decision that your professor would like for you to participate in. Um, Microsoft has really scaled up these applications. So just wanted to highlight those two, the two that may be most useful for you for your online educational experience. Another feature here or another tool that we have here is Dropbox. You might be familiar with that. And the key takeaway from it is that it's a cloud storage system, very similar to OneDrive and also Google Drive. And it's available in case you need another space to also store information. Um, so let's say you run out of storage on your Google Drive. Here is 15 gigabytes that's available for you that might take some time to exhaust. Um, so think of Dropbox in that way. And also um, some of your professors may want you to upload information there or they might provide PDFs. So in that case on, on Dropbox, so in that case, you're going to again, want to log in with your proper Lehman or CUNY First credentials. And then we have email. Um, and as a student who's, I'm about to graduate. So I, we were joking in the office yesterday that email is basically a marketplace with a lot of features. Um, you can get discounts to places like the movies, fitness, um, sometimes there's discounts with like technology and other sweet benefits. I wish I knew about eMall <laughs> because I love movies and I love a good discount, even if it's not about movies. So take some time to explore this space. Again, this presentation will be sent out at a later time and you'll be able to engage um, with the link, but browse through, see what freebies you have. Um, and also as a tip, um, if you have like Spotify and other subscriptions, always try and Google student in front of whatever subscription service that you have um, to get some benefits and discounts. Quick question. Sure. Um, where do I find that link at? So when we um, send out the presentation, all of the blue underlined or hyperlinked information are live. So you can click those links directly. Thank you so much for that. No problem. All right, and so we're almost towards the end. Um, a really important slide that we have here is on accessibility and assistive technology at Lehman. Um, sometimes the assumption with tech is that everybody has access to it or that everything is inherently user-friendly, but it has to be made in that way. Um, and for those of you who need additional assistance or support, you are in the right setting, of course, because we do have our student disability services here on campus. Uh, you're able to request an appointment with Pedro Loriano, um, who is an assistive technology specialist. And they, assistive technologies essentially enable students with disabilities um, to perform tasks that may be otherwise difficult. So some examples of assistive technologies include things like screen readers, voice recorders, note-taking devices, and others. Um, I might pause for a second. Uh, Anthony, did you wanna add anything else um, to this uh, particular slide that we might wanna share with our, our cohort today? Um, <clears throat> no, I would just say just if you wanna, in order to get access to assistive technology services, you do need to first make an appointment with student disability services. They will then direct you to Pedro and he will meet with you one-on-one -on -one, and they'll walk you through how to use whatever tools they're providing you with. Um, so they're not just handing it to you and saying, good luck. Right. <laughs> um, excellent, honestly, I love him. Um, so yeah, you just need to make an appointment in order to start the process. And I would encourage doing that earlier. Um, mm -hmm. 
as soon as possible, really, uh, to avoid waiting and missing out on being able to use it for things you might need. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Anthony. And so the next tool that we have is called Yuja. And you might not have heard about Yuja because this is a very unique um, video sharing platform uh, to Lehman College. And essentially it's like a YouTube. Um, it's where other constituents, be it faculty or staff, um, and in some instances, per perhaps students, if they have access to um, upload video information, may want to store um, important tutorials or open educational resources that are in video format on this platform without uploading it onto social media. Um, and that's really key as well, because sometimes even though social media can be very useful for education, it may not be the best setting for material that um, might need copyright um, or that is copyrighted and that perhaps won't be observed properly in the public um, or for just privacy reasons. Some instructors would just prefer for you to have loan access um, in a place that doesn't require them to sort of like cut a video down into like a very into the right size in order to like email a list of people. There are some limits with what you can send through email. So it hosts um, video, audio, video, uh, visual, excuse me, um, content, and it exists within our own setting. So um, you might be able to look at content that is from a different instructor as well that you would not find outside of this space. So the next tool that we have, and then I remember um, being mentioned a little bit earlier, is called VoiceThread. Um, it is one of the more commonly used tools at Lehman College. It enables students to create interactive digital presentations um, that rely on your narration. And uh, voice thread assignments can take on multiple forms. And we'll go into some examples um, in the next few slides. But some of those forms um, include collaborative, individual, um, and other like creative or remixed ways of using voice thread to complete an assignment in an interactive capacity. So an example that we have here is individual, which could be to just create an original voice thread. Um, some students use voice thread also for their digital portfolios and it is connected through Blackboard. So again, another tool that you don't have to worry about existing somewhere else that you have to integrate back into your learning management or your class environment where the, um, you would say like the nucleus is for your like your online materials, your syllabus and so forth. Another example could be group presentations. Um, one thing that you will likely need to get used to is collaboration in an online environment. And for me, this was a big plus when I was in, before I started grad school and before I came to Lehman, um, I was in a workspace where it was sometimes hard to like get everybody in the same room to do collaborative work. And so a benefit um, that I received in being in an online setting for school was learning how to maximize like asynchronous time, which is time where we're not all together to get things accomplished. And VoiceThread really allows for in group scenarios for those um, participating to upload their content at different times and contribute to the same project. So it may not be something that you need to be online, uh, you each need to be online at the same time for, um, but it still, is allow it still allows everyone to participate. Um, and it may also allow for a little more even distribution with work, especially if there is like a certain time um, mark that everybody has to like hit in order um, for the assignment to like be completed. Um, so just a different way of thinking about presentations and contributions and a way that might be a lot of fun. So, and then the last example, um, we have an, an exemplar here from literature for adolescents. Um, a professor was really kind of like allowing us to sort of um, share this with you, but here's an example of like a class activity on VoiceThread. Um, some students were expected to create one responding to a specific question related to their class reading. And students then shared their thoughts and posted on blogs, their voice threads describing what takeaways 
they had from the book club conversation. So that's another way of like remixing a bit of the two. This is an assignment that you sort of, you do on your own, but it's available for others to interact with and likely comment on. The last, uh, we have two, one more, we have one more slide after this, um, but Lehman 360 is your digital ID and it's all encompassing. It's an online and it's available online and also in application format, if I'm not mistaken, through the Google Play and the Apple Store. Um, and it's essentially, it allows you to have like access to um, different like key areas of the campus um, and tools. And it's something that you definitely should have um, in the event that you need to provide some sort of credentials. And let's say you don't have like your physical card. Um, this is a, an area where you uh, basically put in your first name with the period and your last name and then your password. Um, and we just, we wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of this platform in case you got some information on it elsewhere. Now, quick and question. Really, sure. Now, when you say Lehman credentials, are those the credentials mm -hmm. that you're talking about? So for to log in in this space, it'll tell you um, your first name and your last name and the exemplar that we have here, it's slightly filled out. Um, but this is just an example of what you would enter in. So Anthony, I believe you're in this exemplar. So it's yeah. his first name period with his last name and then he put in his password um, to basically have access to his digital ID. Does that answer your question? Uh, kind of. Um, mm -hmm. I, it, well, I guess what I'm asking is it, there's a CUNY credentials and then there's a Lehman credentials, right? right. Is the it's, Lehman credentials the same thing as your first dot last name or is it totally different? Um, I think it would depend on what you receive. So when you register um, for your credentials, it generally is your first name and your last name, but there could be some instances that you may, you may have a number. Yeah. Go ahead, Anthony. Um, so for this, you would use your Lehman email. Uh, it would be your first name, last name at LC for you guys. Leave off the app part for the login to Lehman mm -hmm. 360. You will have a number in it if somebody has had your like account name before. So if there was another person named Anthony Wheeler, then I might have been Anthony Wheeler one. Um, right. But I was the first. <laughs> um, so yeah. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so does that help? That does help. Thank you so much for that. Okay. And so can everyone hear me so? Awesome. All right. Yes. The last, thank you. <laughs> so the last slide that we have before us is library services off campus. Um, very important, the Leonard Leaf Library at distance and in person for hybrid scenarios. So if you have an online course and you also um, are expected to be in person or have some sort of variation that would um, have you on campus, it's the, the library is essential for your academic uh, success on campus. And we do recommend that you take a lot of time to get to know this space and its virtual presence. So the more relevant service for online or services for online learning includes e-journals, books, subscriptions. Um, as a member of CUNY, you also have access to the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and librarians are clutch in general for finding any piece of information, but they could also assist you um, with how to basically um, put your credentials in so you have access to those very important publications. Um, there is the 24-7 chat feature, which feature, excuse me, which is staffed with Lehman and CUNY affiliated librarians. Um, there have been some moments where I have been working on a paper well into the night, close to midnight, and I have ad, had access to someone who is affiliated within CUNY, if not an actual um, librarian at the Graduate Center who has supported me in answering a question or finding a resource. And it's also important to make appointments to meet with library staff um, so you can ask questions, get support for research, and find out about technology as well. In some instances where you may need access to a computer, perhaps that may be an instance where you may have to come on campus 
and borrow some sort of technology to bring back into your learning environment or your online learning environment or to use for your um, environment in that regard. Um, but that's essentially it. Take time, browse through, look at research guides, um, have fun with it. And that is the end of our, um, or at least my spiel here. I'm going to pass the presentation back to Anthony and Alexis. Um, and I'm sure we'll make some time to answer some questions and some comments. Yeah, awesome. that was great. Thank you both. Excellent, um, excellent. So yeah, that's- Cool, you guys rock. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, throw them out there. We can stay on till like 12.30. Yeah. We ha actually have one question um, that uh, in the chat that said, how can I access a book for class? Um, not sure if the last piece of information clarified that, but feel free to come onto the mic and then we'll probably take a question from Marlene, who I, I see your hand is up. Um, I see Dermot dropped a link to the library. If you go in there, ah, perfect. there is a remote resources page where it's all about accessing those things remotely. Um, mm -hmm. It'll give you a full guide on how to do that. Awesome. Marlene? Hello, and thank you so much for all the information. Um, my question is, my class starts tomorrow, and I don't know if we're meeting via Zoom or via Blackboard um, Collaborative. Mm -hmm. So, and then also, like, it's showing unavailable still on Blackboard. So I'm a little confused. So, uh, one, have you emailed your professor? I don't have her email. It's okay. not showing up either. <laughs> okay. so. Uh, one thing you can do is you can search uh, for the professor in Lehman's website. All of everybody's emails are listed on the website somewhere. Um, thank you, Dermot, for dropping that. Dermot's our associate director of online ed in the chat. He's at the bottom. Um, additionally, if you go to CUNY first and look at Schedule Builder, um, in the course information, it should tell you how you're meeting, what the form, the modality is. So. Double check there. If you're still having issues and can't find their contacts, let us know. Um, I'll drop my email just so you have it on hand. Okay. Marlene, if I could add anything really quickly too. I've had a, a scenario where a professor has provided um, information like the day of, um, very early in the morning as well. And so the chances are that like you, it's probably going to be low stakes that you won't need to have anything like prepared that day except to just attend. And usually they'll just send their own Zoom link. Um, so definitely continue. I follow the, the recommendations of Anthony and check your inbox, especially in the morning or later tonight. Um, yeah, it could just be a matter of they, they expect the first day to just be low stakes. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. See a hand from Alex. Hello. Uh, thank you again for the presentation. And uh, I know that uh, a that uh, it Dermot. That's how I I don't know how to pronounce yeah. that. I'm sorry, but um, uh, it's Dermot, Alex. Don't worry. Your mic is incredible, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> Um, is it too loud? No, it's no, okay. oh, it's clean. You sound like you're a podcast for the Times or something. <laughs> um, thank you. But um, the only the only real question is that um, I currently am in Blackboard. I'm having a similar issue with uh, Merlene in the sense that um, uh, one of my classes, specifically English uh, 111. Um, it's not only saying not currently available in Blackboard, I also can't find this professor specifically because I actually need her email to send to uh, Gabby in Disabilities 
uh, so they could send some things to her and my other professor that I currently have. And I just want to know how I could possibly find that. Yeah, Alex, I'm going to post something right now for English 111 and all the sections right now. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, and I'm going to put in my email. So if you have any questions whatsoever in that I might not have fully answered that, please let me know immediately and we'll get to the bottom of that ASAP. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly. Also, some professors, uh, a note, and feel free to disagree with me, team, um, is that some professors actually, they have access to Blackboard but they may not use that platform religiously. Um, You're totally they right. Might, they might actually um, post grades and complete a lot of administrative expectations for them that, that they are set to like complete on that platform, but they may um, contact you outside of it or they may give you access to a folder on Dropbox. Um, so sometimes it's just a matter of your materials existing outside of that space and that you'll have looser or less engagement with Blackboard this semester. Agreed. Hey everyone, there was a question about Top Hat. Any information about that? I am, Top Hat is one of the LMSs I have the least experience with, to be honest. Same with me. Likewise. You won't really see it at CUNY at all. So don't worry too much about it. Um, it just is not, it's similar to Blackboard as an LMS, has a lot of the similar functions. Um, I would not too crazy about it, <laughs> but. Anybody else wanna jump in before we wrap? Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. This is our first run of show, and I think it went pretty well for what it's worth. Um, like I had said, you can contact us and navigate. I'm dropping the student login in the chat just so you have it on hand. Um, here, use your CUNY First credentials to log in. When you scroll down, there's a box that says your success team. One of us will be listed there along somebody else who, again, I don't know. But <laughs> One of us will be there, and that's the person you can schedule sessions with if you have more questions. Um, and it's super easy. You just click make an appointment, click whatever time slot works for you, and we'll be there. Um, other than that, thank you, everyone. Thank you for my uh, colleagues, present my other presenters. I'm in Dermot in the chat. You were awesome. Yes. <laughs> we well, are the greatest team ever. I'm lucky to get to work with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> oh, thank uh, you so much, everyone. No yeah. uh, sorry, I just want to say one more thing. After actually entering the Navigate, I managed to find the professor in my class schedule Look at that. Nice. in Navigate. So thank you for that. <laughs> I, I just want to say that for those who also might be having that issue. Yeah, no, I appreciate thank that. You. So yeah, otherwise everyone have a good start of the semester. And if it's a little rocky, that's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you again. Of course. Enjoy your Bye. Weekend. Have a good one. See you soon. Man, you guys, you yeah, guys. You guys